Okay, we are chanting from the uh, this prayer verse onwards up to the, uh, the text, the line, sentence of what we are saying. It takes a lot of time. So, from today's class onwards, we will recite from Atmataha. So, I am not uh, going to uh, this chant this sadhana chatushtaya kinman all those things so i'm skipping that so we have chanted uh, well, all these classes so i hope you have committed this to memory as i told you before since sattva bhata is a is a book of definitions it's uh, it's it's important to memorize it text so our uh, daily our every class recitation would have helped you to so, I am skipping now this Sadhana Chatushtaya part and getting to Atma directly. So, you can, I will stand now, you can repeat that. Atma Kaha Atma Kaha Stoola Sokshma Karana Shreerat Yatirittaha Pancha Kosha Tirtasan Avastha Traya Sakshi Satchidananda Rupa San Yaratashtati Sa Sa Atma Kula Sukshma Karana Sharira Dhyatiriktaha Pancha Kosha Dita San Masatraya Sakshi Satchidananda Rupa San Yaratashtati Sa Atma Stula Shariram Kim Panchi Kata Pancha Maha Bhutai Kritam Satkarma Janyam Sukadukha Dibhoga Yatanam Shariram Asti Jayate Vardhate Viparinamate Apakshiyate Vinashyati Iti Shatikaravate Etat Stula Shariram 
अपंचीकृत पंच महाभूत सत्कर्मजन्यम सुख दुखादिभोग साधन पंच ज्ञानेन्द्रिया पंच कर्मेन्द्रिया पंच प्राणादय मनश्चक बुद्धिश्चेका सप्तश कला यदि तत्सूक्ष्मशरीर अपंचीकृत पंच महाभूत सुख दुखादिभोग साधन सप्तश It's not uh, Saptadasha Kaladhi Shaha Yatra. No, that is Saptadasha Kaladhi Shaha. That which is along with the 17th components. So, Saptadasha Kaladhi Shaha Yatra Tishtati Tata Sukhma Sharijamu. Right? So, you have to split that. Right? So, that will make the sense. Yeah. Yatra Tishtati Tata Sukhma Sharijamu. Okay. 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 Next one. श्रोत्रम तुपे चक्षुरसना ध्यानमिति पंच ज्ञानेन्द्रिया श्रोत्रम तपे चक्षुरसना ध्यानमिति पंच ज्ञानेन्द्रिया श्रोत्र से दिग्देवता पचो वायु चक्षुष सूर्य रसनाया वरुण ध्यान से अश्विन ज्ञानेन्द्रिय देवता विषय शब्द ग्रहण पचो विषय स्पर्श ग्रहण चक्षुषो विषय रूपग्रहण रसनाया विषय रसग्रहण ध्यान से विषय गंधग्रहण श्रोत्रस्य विषय शब्द ग्रहण कथो विषय ग्रहण चक्षुषो विषय रसनाया विषय रसग्रहण ्रिया पाचो विष्णुर्मृत्यु वाचो विषयो भाषणं पाण्यो विषयो वस्तु ग्रगनं पादयो विषयो गमनं पायोर विषयो मलत्यागः उपस्थस्य विषयः आनंद इति भाषणं पादयो 
ಪ್ರಾಣಾಪಾನವ್ಯಾನೋದಾನ ಸಂಚ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪವಿಕಲ್ಪಾತ್ಮಕ ಮನಃ ನಿಶ್ಚಯಾತ್ಮಕ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರ ಅನಿರ್ವಾಚ್ಯ ಅನಾದಿ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾರೂಪ ಶರೀರದ್ವಯಸ್ಯಣ ಮಾತ್ರ ಸತ್ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪಕರೂಪ ಯದಸ್ತಿ ತಣ ಶರೀರ ಆತ್ಮ this uh, chart it describes only that atma is distinct from sharira trayam atma you know the definition of atma sharira trayat vitrikta that one depart from the definition of atma and taking it and explaining it further with regard to three sharira out atma is distinct from three sharirams atma sharira traya vitrittah different from sharira trayam sharira trayam what is sharira trayam it is the sharirams what are those three sharirams stula shariram sukma shariram and karana shariram now you are familiar with the definition of ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಂ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಶರೀರಂ ಅನುಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರಂ ಸಿ ವಿ ನೋ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಎನಿ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ಶರೀರಂ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಶರೀರಂ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರಂ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ಶರೀರಂ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾರಣಂ ಕೆನ್ ಸಿ ಇಯರ್ ದ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಕಾರಣಂ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾರಣಂ ದ ಕಾಸ್ one is samanya karanam general cause other one is vishe vishesha karanam vishesha karanam special cause two ka- types of causes are there sai shariram samanya karanam vishesha karanam so one is cause so based on cause i have put the, the definition of the shariram here yeah, that we will see so we will see now the features of each general features of each shariram that is the general features by which the each shariram is described one is karana the karana could be a special cause or a samanya karana with general cause and special cause the second one is karyam the second one is karyam here karyam is the function its purpose that is karyam a karyam is not the effect it is the what is the use what is the function that is the karyam so the first feature is karanam the second feature is what is it function the third one is swabhavam swabhavam what is its nature what is its nature and fourth one is avastha what is its state condition avastha is condition so now four features are there karanam that is cause karyam that is a function the purpose third one is swabhavam nature fourth one is vastha condition so these four features are there with regard to four features how each shariram is going to be described if it takes two shariram 
சூர சரீரம் சாமானிய காரணம் பஞ்சீகிருத பஞ்சமத பூதானி பஞ்சீகிருத இனோ பஞ்சீகிருத ஜனரல்ஷரீரம் for the samane karanam the general karanam for sura shariram is panchikrta panchamaha bhutani samane karanam for sukshma shariram is apanchikrta panchamaha bhutani okay now coming back to vishesha karanam what is the special cause sura shariram because of sat karma good karma what you have done so sat karma janyam the definition it is that sat karma janyam therefore that is a special cause and apanchi sorry and, and in sukshma sharira or sukshma sharira also the special cause is tat karma so samane karanam is panchi krita panchamaha bhutani for stula sharira vishesha karanam is tat karma similarly samane karanam for sukshma sharira is panchi krita panchamaha bhutani விசேஷ காரணம் இஸ் சத்கர்மா ஓகே வை தேர் இஸ் டிஸ்டிங்ஷன் சாமானிய காரணம் விசேஷ காரணம் ஆல் தி பீங்ஸ் அதர் இட் இஸ் ஈவன் பீங்ஸ் ஆர் எனி அதர் பீங் இட் ஆல் மேட் அப் ஆஃப் பஞ்சீகிருதா ஓன்லி இட் ஆல் மேட் அப் ஆஃப் பஞ்சபூதா ஓன்லி பட் ஹியூமன் பீங்ஸ் ஐ வாட்ஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் காஸ் வாட் இஸ் தட் சத்கர்ம புண்ணிய கர்மனா ஏவ மனுஷ ஜென்மக லபியதே தேர் ஃபோர் தட் விசேஷ காரணம் இஸ் தேர் ஃபார் ஹியூமன் பீங்ஸ் of course vishesha karma is there for the ado jeeva also what is that papa papa karma so therefore samane karana vishesha karana for stula sharira and sukshma sharira is given here now for karma sharira there is no samane karma vishesha karana the only karana but all you can say what is that it is avidya only avidya and what is that avidya it is anadi avidya is beginningless avidya that is the karana so now the three sharirans has been described with respect to karanam that is cause now the second one karyam what is its function what is the function of stula shariram sukha dukkha adi bhoga ayatanam it is the ayatanam it is the abode of experience of sukha dukkha Sita, Ushna, all the experiences is the abode. And Sukhma Shariram is Sukha Dukkha Adi Bhoga Sadhana. It is a means by which you experience Sukha Dukkha, etc. All the experiences. That is the function. And for Karada Shariram it is, what is the function? Sharira Dvayasya Karana. It is responsible for both the stula shariram and sukshma shariram that is that is the karya that is a function that is the purpose of karana shariram okay so sharira dvaya karana matra all the definitions what we saw that i have put it in a in a chart form now the next feature is swabhav what is its nature shat vikaravat six fold modifications for stula sharira you know what it is asti jayate vardate viparinamate apakshiyate vinashyati stula sharira is subject to six fold modification six fold changes and what about sukshma sharira it also has got vikara vikaravat that is also subject to vikara changes it's about sura shariram is different for different jeevas manushya uh, sorry sukshma shariram manushya sukshma shariram is different from the sukshma shariram of the uh, other being the living being so it is also subject to modification even as it is say that uh, 
பஞ்ச ஜானேந்திரியாணி பஞ்ச கர்மேந்திரியாணி மனச்ச புத்தி மனஹ புத்தி என்றால் விகாரம் தேர் ஆல் சப்ஜெக்ட் சப்ஜெக்ட் டு சேஞ்ச் விகாரம் even as a human being our mind and buddhi they are subject to change it changes thoughts change there is therefore the swabhavam is swabhavam of sukshma sharira is vikara if there is no vikara in the mind then you cannot think the mind keeps changing all the time the mind is a part of sukshma sharira therefore the swabhava of sukshma sharira is vikara subject to change and what is the swabhava the nature of the arna shariram it is sat swarupa ajnanam that is its swabhava ajnanam ignorance of one's own real nature sat swarupa that is the swabhava of arna shariram and the fourth feature is avastha what is its condition stula shariram is stula because it is a gross body it should be gross only stula that is available for perception tangible tangibility is its condition and sukshma shariram it is subtle it is sukshma it is not available for physical perception but it is inferred by its function therefore it is sukshma it is subtle and the swabhavam of karana shariram is nirvikalpakam there is no division in dharana shariram that is its avastha condition so the definition of all the three shariras has been put in a flow chart form with regard to the, the four features dharanam daryam subhavam and avastha i will send you this it is for you easy to remember okay now so now we will continue avastha trayantim avastha trayantim jagrat swapna sushupti avastha jagrat swapna sushupti avastha jagrat avastha ka ஜாகிரத்த <laughs> ஜாகிரத்தவஸ்தாயா ஜாகிரத்தவஸ்தாயா <laughs> சூக்ஷ்மீர Sukhna, Kya Shuddhi, Asuna Dujar, I hope you understand that. Okay. Now, after 25 minutes, we are getting to the, getting to the class now. Okay. Now you can move your mic and listen. Uh, In the last two classes, we have been discussing the topic, Vastatraya. the three states of experience 
to understand that atma is avastatraya sakshi atma is the witness of the avastatraya the three states of experience because atma is sakshi the presence of atma is understood in all its three avastas also the three states belong to atma and atma doesn't belong to any of the three states in the presence of atma all experiences are experienced without atma no experiences are possible i have repeated this many times but it's very important in the presence of atma all experiences are experience and without atma no experiences are possible suppose if you ask me can you prove it yes we can prove it i can prove by a simple logic we did not know much about the vedanta also but we can prove by a simple logic we can prove by applying the principle called anvaya yatireka this is an important logic which we apply in vedanta or in other places also to prove something i tell you what it is that principle is called anvaya yatireka we will discuss on this principle in detail in another context today i will ex- i will explain what it is in brief so listen carefully it's very important so listen carefully anvaya vipireka the two words anvaya and vipireka anvaya anvaya means invariable co-presence in english it is translated as in the invariable co-presence or invariable concomitance i'll explain what what anvaya is first let us say that there are two persons father and son now the existence of father is the now the existence of son is because of father father is there and therefore son is there very simple pitru satve putrasya satvam in sanskrit you say or to put it in a simple way pita asti putra asti father is there and therefore son is there this is anvaya invariable concomitance vyatireka means invariable coabsence or invariable inconcomitance i'll explain what it is let us take the same example father and son if father is not there then what will happen to the son before his birth will the son be there no if father is not there son is not there pitu <coughs> abhave putrasya abhavam to put it simply pita nasti putra nasti simple this is vyatireka son is because father is son is not because father is not i can put it differently father is son is father is not son is not father is therefore son is father is not and therefore son is not so now who is the karanam who is the cause father पिता अस्ति पुत्रः अस्ति पिता नास्ति पुत्रः नास्ति तस्मात् पिता एव पुत्रस्य कारणं सिंपल संस्कृत हे वो पीपल एंड फॉलो दिस इज कॉल्ड अनवय व्यतिरेकम 
I'll give some more examples for your understanding. <coughs> Gold is ornaments are. Gold is not ornaments are not. If gold is not, how can ornaments be? So, iranyam asti, bhushanani santi. Iranyam nasti, bhushanani na santi. Tasmat iranyam eva bhushananam karanam. That was gold is because of ornaments. Similarly, clay is, pot is, clay is not, pot is not. Vrittika asti, ghataha asti. Vrittika nasti, ghataha nasti. Tasmat vrittika eva, ghatasya karanam. Wood is, table is, wood is not, table is not. Kashtam asti. Kashtam means wood. Uttitaka asti. Table. Wood is there, therefore table is there. Kashtam nasti. Uttitaka nasti. Tasmat kashtam eva uttitaka yaha karanam. Therefore wood is a cause of table. Fiber is. Shawl is. Fiber is not. Shawl is not. Tantuhu asti. Tantuhu means fiber. Uttariyam asti, shawl. Tantuhu asti, uttariyam asti. Tantuhu nasti, uttariyam nasti. Tasmat, tantuhu yeva, uttariyasya karanam. I use the same examples when I explain even Mithya. That is why I am giving the same examples. So, by, this is called Anvaya Vithireka. By applying Anvaya Vithireka, now we can say, Gold is the karanam of ornaments. Clay is the karanam of pot. Wood is the karanam of table. Fiber is the karanam of shawl. Extending the same logic to our topic, we can say, Atma is avasthas are. Atma is not Avastas are not. Understand? Atma is. Therefore, Vekar is. Atma is not. Vekar is not. Atma asti. Jagratavasta asti. Vishwaha asti. Atma nasti. Jagratavasta nasti. Vishwaha nasti. Atma is. Therefore, Dreamer is. Atma is not, dreamer is not. Atma asti, swapna avastha asti, taigisaha asti. Atma nasti, swapna avastha nasti, taigisaha nasti. Similarly, Atma is, therefore, sleeper is. Atma is not, sleeper is not. Atma asti, sushupti avastha asti, rajneha asti. Atma nasti, sushupti avastha nasti, pranyaha nasti. So this is how we apply the principle of anvaya vitirekam. By this we can easily establish that Atma is present in all the three avastas and because of Atma all the experiences are possible. How simply we can prove. So now can you say <coughs> Listen carefully. Can you say, waker is and therefore sleeper and dreamer are? Can you say? Can you say, waker is not, sleeper and dreamer are not? Can you say? No, you cannot say. I am taking only the three states of experience excluding Atma. Right? Understand? When waker is there, there is no sleeper or dreamer because only waker is there. When wake, waking is there, there cannot be sleeping or dreaming action. So when waker is there, there is no sleeper or dreamer, no anvayam. When waker is not, sleeper and, or dreamer is there. 
when waking is when the person is not awake the person either must be sleeping or dreaming therefore when the waker is not sleeper or dreamer are there or is there therefore no vetirekam also therefore waker cannot be the cause for experiencing sleep or dream so anvaya vetireka is not there similarly you cannot say sleeper is and therefore waker and dreamer are sleeper is not and therefore waker and dreamer are not you cannot say when sleeper is there there is no waker there is no dreamer when sleeper is not either waker is there or dreamer is there therefore sleeper cannot be the cause for waking or dream so no anvaya vitireka here similarly you cannot say dreamer is and therefore waker and sleeper are dreamer is not and therefore waker and sleeper are not you cannot say when dreamer is there there is no waker there is no sleeper when dreamer is not there must be either waker or sleeper therefore dreamer cannot be the cause for waking or sleep so anvaya vitireka is not there therefore the three avasthas the three states of experience don't have invariable concomitance and invariable inconcomitance there is no anvaya vitireka in between the three states of experience there is anvaya vitireka in between atma and the three states of experience therefore we can conclude atma is invariably present in all the three avasthas it is because of atma all the experiences are possible so very simple logic by which we can establish atma is sanstatarya sakshi okay now what are those three avasthas jagrat swapna susupti iti avastha trayam bhavati avastha trayam bhavati atma sakshi rupena त्रिषु अवस्थासु वर्तते आत्मा इज देयर द फॉर्म ऑफ साक्षी फॉर्म ऑफ विटनेस इन ऑल दिस थ्री अवस्थास एंड वी हैव सीन व्हाट ईच अवस्था इज इफ यू कैन रिमेंबर जागृत अवस्था का इति पृच्छेत व्हाट इज जागृत अवस्था यस्मिन अवस्थायां श्रोत्रं त्वक चक्षु रसना घ्रानं इति पञ्च ज्ञानेन्द्रियैः वाक्पाणि पादपायुवस्थानि इति पञ्च कर्मेन्द्रियैः च शब्द स्पर्श रूप रस ध्यान पंचभूत जगत विषय ज्ञान साफिनेशन जागृत अवस्था इट इज जस्ट एक्सटेडेड सोत्रादि ज्ञान सोत्रादि ज्ञानेन्द्रिय शब्दादि विषय ज्ञान यस्वस्थायां सा जागृत अवस्था अवस्था इन विच यू गेट इन विच यू गेट शब्दादि विषय ज्ञान श्रोत्रादि ज्ञानेन्द्रिया इज गॉट जागृत अवस्था इन डीटेल नेक्स्ट अवस्था इज स्वप्नावस्था स्वप्नावस्था का चेत वॉट इज स्वप्नावस्था वासनया यहा प्रपंच प्रतीयते निद्रा समय सा स्वप्न अवस्था वासनाया जनन कथम औड स्वासना जागृतवस्थायाजागृतवस्थाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्यवनाजन्य
சுசுப்தி அவஸ்தா ஸ்லீப் ஸ்டேட் பிஃபோர் வி டிஸ்கஸ் இட் வி வில் டிஸ்கஸ் ஆன் தி இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் டிஸ்கஸ் டிஸ்கஸிங் ஆன் ஸ்லீப் ஸ்டேட் இட்ஸ் அன் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அவஸ்தா விச் இஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் சாஸ்திரம் இன் மெனி கேசஸ் ஜாகிரத் அவஸ்தா இஸ் ஆப்ஜெக்டிவ் we know that jagrat avastha is objective it is available for everyone to interact with the prapancha the jagat is there and the other jeevas are also available for interaction they are not your creation it is ishvara srishti therefore it has tens satyam what satyam vyavaharika satyam jagrat avastha is got vyavaharika satyam so that you can interact with the jagat in the waking state but antara prapancha the in the world is subjective antara prapancha is subjective it is one's own creation there are also jagat and other jeevas are available for interaction but they are your creation it is that creation is your srishti jeeva srishti in which you are ishvara therefore ஆந்திர பிரபஞ்சம் ஆஸ் பிராதிபாசிக சத்தியம் சப்ஜெக்டிவ் ரியாலிட்டி ஜாகிரத அவஸ்தா ஆஸ் ஆப்ஜெக்டிவ் ரியாலிட்டி ஆர் எம்பிரிக்கல் ரியாலிட்டி ஆந்திர பிரபஞ்சம் ஆஸ் பிராதிபாசிக சத்தியம் தட் இஸ் சப்ஜெக்டிவ் ரியாலிட்டி இன் போத் ஆஃப் தீஸ் அவஸ்தாஸ் ஜாகிரத் அண்ட் சொப்ன அவஸ்தாஸ் தேர் இஸ் ஜுவாலிட்டி எ பிளேன் சப்ஜெக்ட் ஆப்ஜெக்ட் டிவிஷன் இஸ் தேர் the subject you are present and think other than you are also present drik drishya he say in sanskrit is there drik drishya is there seer and the seeing the knower and the known there is interaction yavahara between the subject and the object in both the waking and the dream states it is there as i said before drik drishya subject object knower known all are same i can add one more to it also agam idam another important uh, pair of words agam idam i and this agam is me agam is me the atma anything other than me is idam in brahma sutra and all they use agam idam only idam means anything other than me agam idam idam is prathama vibhakti ekavachana roopam of idam shabda in napun sakalinga idam ime imani that idam so idam refers to anything which you can objectify that which you can perceive that is available for your perception and objectification therefore idam is object agam is the subject the whole jagat which is available for objectification is idam idam grigam idam yanam idam pustakam idam dhanam everything is idam only anything that you possess is also idam my umbrella my pen my mobile all your possessions are idam what about your body mind senses they are also idam they are, they are your possessions the only difference between my umbrella and my body is that i move with the body always you can take it you your umbrella whenever it is raining you can leave it home when you don't need it but you cannot do the same thing with the body i cannot separate my body voluntarily from me whenever i require that's why you have to carry it maybe you can do it if you have the yogic technique called uh, now the parakaya sharira pravesham as arunagiri nadar did that living one body and getting to another body these are all siddhis we are not talking about it we are talking about natural involuntary action involuntarily you give up the body and when you go to sleep that is done every day at the final day you have to give up whether you will it or not you have to give it up if you don't give it up willfully then it will be snatched from you by bhagwan so we should be prepared to give it happily at the 
finally so now this idam shariram idam manaha idam indriyam ivani indriyani all these are objects My body mind senses all objects idam shabdena vaktum shakete even your thoughts are also idam your emotions are idam feelings are idam your worries and anxieties are idam the sense of mama and ahankara also idam because mama is only the form of thoughts it is idam ahankara is also a thought only therefore that is also idam so idam means that which is available for your objectification that which doesn't change that which remains as sakshi in spite of every object coming to your knowledge or experience is atma that is agam and i'm introducing agam idam one more pair of words to denote subject object okay in fact idam is known why how idam is known because of atma this idam atma idam agam idam division is evident in jagrat and swapna avasthas this subject object division is evident in jagrat and swapna avastha tayoho bedaha jagrat avasthaya swapna avasthayam cha eva gnatum shakyate the difference the division can be recognized only in the waking state and dream state so in the in these two two states only subject object division is recognized we can give one more word, one more name one one more name to idam what is that anatma whether you call uh, drik drishya aham idam atma anatma it's all same it's all subject object what is anatma that which is at- not atma that which is not atma that which is other than you is anatma so therefore we have many words to denote this division we can be familiar with these words i can i will be free to use any of this pair of words agam kitam atma anatma drip drishyam subject object no one known see or seen so i can use any pair of words to denote this division i can use one more pair of words the sankhya darshanam that is a darshanam called sankhya darshanam it divides a whole into two purusha and prakriti another pair of words purusha and prakriti according to sankhya system purusha purusha is chetana sentient prakriti is achetana insentient so sankhya darshanam it insists on duality prakriti and purusha two things are there subject and object but vedanta reserves prakriti also into purusha that is why vedanta that what we study they in they, it is advaita vedanta reserves prakriti also into purusha it doesn't accept dvaita it is advaita understand what advaita is advaitam is uh, you must know what advaitam is advaitam is translated as non duality not two there are not two things that is advaitam if it is not two like agam idam atma anatma drik drishyam chetana machetanam purusha and prakriti then why don't we call it by the word ekam one you can call it ekam if not two means only one therefore it should be ekam please listen suppose if i ask you to go and check up the next room whether anybody is talking because i heard a loud conversation between the two persons you went and checked up you found that there was only one person you came back to me and said there is only one because i heard the conversation between the two persons now the notion of two is to be negated by the knowledge of one 
the word ekam can be used only when there is more than one or when there is a seeming perception of more than one but in reality there are not more than one like in the example but there is a perception of two dvaitam to negate dvaitam we have to say dvaitam not dvait dvaitam then if that is so then how do you account for all the dvaita experiences all the subject object the division the experiences they are nitya simple they are nitya if you say ekam there is only one then how do you account for all your empirical experiences what you experience in the jagat how do you account for that so you have to accept two though they are two they are not two in reality in the absolute reality it is not two therefore ekam there are parts but there is one with reference to parts many parts there is only one play in reality really speaking there are no parts at all then what to talk of many what is there is only play therefore we are negating the parts saying no parts what then only play no part only play there is no part and play there is no part and play no dvaitam the only play ekam therefore advaitam ekam ekam the word can be used in the paramarthika sense advaitam is used in the empirical reality negating all the dvaita anubhava all the the experiences of duality therefore when we say advaitam it is to negate the jagat as mithya we can negate the jagat as mithya only in terms of understanding not in terms of experiences not in terms of our perception anubhava is dvaitam though the anubhava is dvaitam fact is advaitam ekam eva dvitiyam brahma there is only one non dual reality okay so i have used many words to denote the subject of it so in short what i am saying is in jagrat and susupti avastha the subject object division is there okay now is there any other state where the subject object division is idam agam that vedaha this duality is completely absent the any state in fact it is difficult to imagine the state where there is no subject object it is difficult to imagine without object if object is not there then only you are there if object is not there then only you are there if object is not there then how can you know that if there is a subject subject exists with reference to the object the experience of subject is there because of the object if subject is not there then how can you know that there are objects that is also not possible but there is a state where this duality is completely absent at least absent for some time that is why no transactions no vyavahara happen in that state since there are no objects available for subject to interact in that state only subject that you exist therefore no duality no dvaitam there is no vikalpa between idam and agam idam is not there the recognizer of idam that is you are also not there really it doesn't mean you cease to exist exist no you are resolved for the time being to the avyakta form to the manifest form you are resolved you don't know that in that state you exist what is that state it is an important avastha which shastram considers seriously and discusses it what is that avastha shastram discusses it tatah susupti avastha ka you can chant it tatah susupti avastha ka अहम् किमपि न जानामि अहम् किमपि न जानामि 
மயா நிதிரா சுகேன மயா நிதிரா அனுபூயதே ஓகே <laughs> what is that stage which you are talking now sushupti avastha so sushupti avastha is the state where there is no subject object duality sushupti and you should know what what is that avastha avastha has to be described sushupti avastha ka what is the sleep state agam kemapi na janami i don't know anything maya sukhena nidra anubhuyate Sleep is experienced by me happily. The sentence in Karmani Prayoga. Maya, Sukhena, Nidra, Anubhuyat. Karmani Prayoga. In Karmani Prayoga, how do you say? Agam, Sukhena, Nidra, Anubhuyati. I enjoy sleep happily. So, Agam, Kimma Pina Janami, Sukhena, Maya, Nidra, Anubhuyat. When do you say like this? In sleep or in dream? <coughs> if you say that in sleep then it is not sleep if you say that in dream then it is after all a dream therefore when do you say this you say that in the sleep state or the dream state none not in both these states you talk about your experiences in the sleep only after you wake up from the sleep you recollect your sleep experiences and because it is present and there is there are no worries you want to continue it you recount your experiences after you wake up because there is a happiness there is a certain pressure you enjoy therefore that's why nobody wants to get up in the morning they want to prolong their sleep that also cannot happen you cannot prolong your sleep because your karmas are waiting for you you have to undergo or experience those karmas in the waking state therefore you have to get up in spite of sukha anubhava you have to get up the same atma which was present in the jagrat and sushupti avastha it is also present here it has to be because it is sakshi avastha tre sakshi therefore you recount the experiences of the sleep after you wake up in the waking state you recollect your sleep experience saying agam kimapi na janami ayas ke na nidra anubhuyate and the karana sharira abhimani atma prajnya iti uchyate the one who is identified with this karana shariram causal body is called prajnya in sukti you don't have any knowledge of what it is before going to sleep you don't have any knowledge about it during sleep you don't have any knowledge about it only after you wake up you have some knowledge about the sleep maya sukhe nidra anubhuyate there are two fold experiences in sleep in generally number 1 agam kimapi na janami number 2 aya sukena nidra anubhuyate let us take the first one agam kimapi na janami the first experience we will take i don't know anything to say that after we get up in the jagrat and swapna avastha we have complete identification with this body mind sense complex and also we consider the prapancha the jagat as different from me and therefore we do vivahara in sushupti avastha this is completely absent i don't know anything in sleep suppose if i ask you after you wake up from sushupti what did you see in deep sleep then what would be what would be your, your answer you will say i did not see anything 
We have not seen anything implies that you were the seer. You have not seen anything. It says, it shows that you were there as a seer. You did not hear anything in sleep. Implies that you were the hearer. You did not perceive anything in sleep. Implies that you were the perceiver. In all this, the seer, hearer, perceiver, the suffix er indicates that you were there. I'll explain this. Again, with another example. Suppose I ask you to go and find out whether anybody is there in the room. You went and checked the room. You found nobody in the room. The room was empty. You came back and said, nobody is there. My question was, did you see anybody in the room? No. You said, no. No, I didn't see anyone in the room. How do you know that nobody was there in the room? Because you saw. What did you see? You saw nobody. How can you see nobody? It means you did not see anybody in the room. To see nobody, you must be there. You were there. Therefore, you had the experience of seeing nobody in the room. If you were not there, then you cannot recognize the absence of nobody in the room. Understand? Therefore, you were there to see nobody in the room. You were present. You were very well present there. Similarly, when you say, Look, I don't know anything. I did not experience anything in sleep. It means what? It means you were there. But you don't know that when you are in sleep. If you know, then it is not a sleep. You know that only in the waking state. In Sushupti, there, was, there is absence of knowledge of any particular experience. There is absence of, there is absence of knowledge. Vishaya Jnana Abhavaha Pasti. There is complete absence of any particular experience and in particular any knowledge. So Shukti is an experience in which I don't have any particular experience. It is an experience of the absence of any particular experience. There is no subject of the relationship, no or known division, as you experience in Jagrat and Svatna Avastha. Therefore, it looks as though there was, there is nothing. It looks as though there is nothing in sleep. But you are there very much. But you don't know that in sleep. You don't know that Agam Satchidananda Atma. Not only in Sushipti, in waking also, we don't know that Agam Satchidananda Atma. But in waking and dream state, with regard to your nature, you commit a mistake. You identify with so many things and say, this is Agam. But in sleep, you don't commit any mistake. You are there. You are completely present there. But you are totally ignorant. Kevala Ajnanam Eva Asti. Only ignorance is there. Therefore, you say, Adam Kimapina Janami. This is one experience. Another experience is, Maya Sukena Vidra Anudhuyate. I slept happily. We recount our experience after we get up. Ask, oh, I slept like a log. I slept happily. It was an undisturbed good sleep. I don't want to get up. You say that. It means you experienced some sukham. You experienced some sukham in susupti. In fact, it is not sukham. It is absence of dukkham. There is no sense of limitation. Because you are not limited by any experience. There are no objects to limit you. Therefore, you taste a glimpse of fullness. You never say sleep is dukkham, sleep is painful. Therefore, we all love sleep and we don't want to skip sleeping. That when you go to sleep, before you go to sleep, you take so much care that everything is okay. You, have, you, you check the height of the pillow because it should not cause you any pain when you sleep. The fan should be there, air circulation should be there, windows must be open. And if you are in Chennai, you need AC, the lights should it should not be totally off, you, want, you don't want the room to be dark, you want some night lamp to be there and it should not disturb your sleep, no mosquitoes, there should not be any wrinkles on the, uh, no, the bedspread, otherwise it will disturb your sleep. 
we prepare the bedding so carefully because sleep is a welcome experience it gives you sukham but the thing is that sukham is continual not continuous sukham every day we experience that sukham for some time say 6 to 8 hours of it, sukham that that also not uh, the 6 to 8 full 8 hours we experience sukham in that duration that experience is not continuous it is continual i hope you know the difference between continuous and continual if the experience doesn't leave you any time it is continuous if the experience happens at some interval then it is continual so therefore sushipti sukham is continual it is not continuous then what about the continuous experience continuous sukha, sukha anubhava it is you it is your nature a glimpse of your nature is what you experience in sleep therefore it is continual though it is continual we all enjoy that experience and everybody enjoys it bhagwan is impartial in giving sleep to sleep experience to all of us everybody enjoys the same sleep there's no partiality the raja may go to sleep beggar also goes to sleep what is the difference between the two the raja He gives up his identity of being a king when he goes to sleep. The beggar also gives up, gives up his identity of being a beggar when he goes to sleep. So both enjoy the same sleep experience. A blind person when he goes to sleep is no more blind in Sushupti. Yeah. Similarly, a, a, a deaf person also. Andaha na andaha Sushupta. Bhadiraha na bhadiraha Sushupta. A saint is no more a saint in the sleep. A sinner is no more a sinner in the sleep. In fact, a sinner, I use this word, a sinner and beggar, it is not the right word. Uh, I use it uh, only to bring the con- contrast. So, please, uh, you can uh, correct those words. The beggar is not the right word. Swamiji is very particular in uh, avoiding certain words. I use these words to bring the contrast between the two extreme persons. So, the right word for... <laughs> Uh, to use for beggar is the person who is subject to begging. Beggar, begging is not his profession. Circumstances made him to beg. Therefore, the person is given to begging. That is the right word. Beggar is not the right word. Similarly, sinner is not the right word. We don't use that word at all in the tradition. In our, in our parampara, in our culture, we don't use that word at all. The right word could be papam punyam, punyavan pati. That is a pati is the right word. Papi is not, Papi is a word for that. But all we want to use the word, equal, equivalent word for singer. The one who does action is, good action is Punyama. His own action, it rewards him with good results. Therefore, he is Punyama. A Papi is one whose actions bring in invisible bad consequences. Therefore, he is a Papi. By using the word sinner, we are labeling the person as though he is a born sinner. Sinner is not a permanent title. If that person is not a sinner, he is not a wicked person all the time and with all the people. If you have that person or if you watch the person, the person may be very kind and compassionate with his wife, with his mother, with his son. He is very kind and, uh, and gentle. Also, how can you call him a sinner? So, the sinner is not the correct word. It's a labeling word. So, we should avoid using those words. Anyway, so the point is here, anybody goes to sleep, enjoy the same sleep experience. Therefore, whoever it may be, when they go to sleep, they drop the identification and enjoy the divisionless status. Okay. <coughs> there is no vikalpa in Sushupti. There is no vikalpa in Sushupti, that is why you experience Sukham. So, Sushupti is a state of nirvikalpa. There is no sense of individuality and therefore there is no sense of limitation. That is why everyone loves it and everyone is given also to enjoy. Sushupti avastha is a nirvikalpa avastha. When there is no vikalpa, the subject doesn't undergo any changes. The subject doesn't assume any role, he is not a thinker, he is not a doer, he is not a knower, he is not a smeller, he is not a perceiver, he is not a seer, no ER there. Therefore, we all love that Nirvikalpa. 
There are some people who practice severe yogic techniques to experience nirvikalpa samadhi, a state in which there is no vikalpa. In sleep also you have no vikalpa, in samadhi also you have no vikalpa. One is involuntary, other one is deliberate. Both are nirvikalpas only. The, the absence of duality is what you love in both. When you come out from Nirvikalpa Samadhi, you would say that I was Nirvikalpa. I enjoyed. But our Shastram says, you are Nirvikalpa always in spite of subject object division. The status of your Nirvikalpa Katham, it doesn't come and go. It is your very nature. Therefore, to experience Nirvikalpa, you don't have to experience Nirvikalpa Samadhi. You don't accept that and don't be carried away by it. It is also an experience like any other experience, Nirvikalpa Samadhi. It comes and goes away. You are already Nirvikalpa. Therefore, you don't have to work for Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Therefore, Maya Sukhena Nidra Anubhuyate. I enjoy. I sleep happily. In sleep, there is neither Stula Sharira Abhivanam nor Sukhma Sharira Abhivanam. There is neither Vishwaha nor Taijasaha. Then, with what Shariram you identify yourself with in sleep? If I can use the word Shariram. Because in sleep, the sleeper experiences Sukham. We call the instrument of experience as Shariram. The sleeper as the stomach, some Sukha experience. The sleeper is there, the, that person is there and enjoys some sukham. Though he recounts that experience after he wakes up, but the, the sleeper has experiences some sukham in sleep, that is inferred. Therefore, we can say the sleeper has abhimana with some shariram. Since any experience involves shariram, we assume that sleeper also must have associated with some shariram. The sleeper has Adimana with some Shariram and that Shariram is called Karana Shariram about which we discuss elaborately can refer to the previous classes. Since nothing is known in sleep which means only Vidya is there Karana Shariram is in the form of Avidya Vritti in the form of Avidya Vritti Vritti is thoughts you are identified with that avidya vritti in sleep and therefore you say Agam kimapi na janami, I don't know anything you say. That means what you are ignorant. Ignorance. That is a vritti. That is a thought. This avidya also it comes into light only by chaitanyam, only by the consciousness. You. It is chaitanyam which illumines everything. Whether it is avidya vritti or any vritti. That is only the chaitanyam reveals. Chaitanyam is consciousness, it is you. You can use the word Chaitanyam or Adam, Atma, anything. That's, there should not be any confusion in that. So, any vritti, whether it is Avidya vritti or any vritti, that is illumined by the Chaitanyam. You don't know French, suppose. Now, you have Avidya of French. You know that you don't know French. You don't know French, it's a knowledge. That is all lighted by it's Chaitanya. Therefore, that Avidya Vritti also, Avidya Vritti in sleep also, it is lighted by or it is comes, comes to knowledge by Chaitanya Mani. So Chaitanya or Atma or Sakshi all are same. I use the words appropriately in that context. So, in sleep, all your thoughts, all your thoughts are resolved in its Karanam and therefore, they don't function. Your buddhi is resolved. Your antakarana is resolved. Therefore, you don't have thoughts. That, this resolution, this pralayam is temporary. It is nitya pralayam. Every day it comes and goes. The state of resolution is karana shariram. That into which it resolves is karana shariram.
அபிமானா வித் தட் காரண சரீரம் இஸ் நெசசரி டு எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் சுசுப்தி இந்த அவஸ்தா இந்த சுசுப்தி அவஸ்தா சாட்சி ரூபேன சைத்தன்யம் வர்த்ததே சைத்தன்யம் இஸ் இன் தாம் ஆஃப் இஸ் இன் தி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் சாட்சி விட்னஸ் விச் மீன்ஸ் த நத்திங்னஸ் ஆர் எம்டினஸ் வாட் யூ எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் தி இஸ் ஆல்சோ ஆஸ் அ சாட்சி தி சாட்சி இஸ் வித் தட் therefore you have experience there is an experience of nothingness and therefore the experiencer is there that chaitanya which is associated with the karana sharidam which is the the illuminator of the experience of the absence of experiences is known as sleeper or in sanskrit we call prajna prajna is that then given to காரண சரீர அபிமானி ஆத்மா இஸ் பிராஜ்னா வை இஸ் பிராஜ்னா நாட் பிகாஸ் இஸ் இன்டெலிஜென்ட் இட் இஸ் டு பாயிண்ட் அவுட் தட் தேர் இஸ் சைத்தன்யம் ஈவன் வென் தேர் இஸ் நத்திங் டு எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஈவன் வென் தெர் ஆர் நோ ஆப்ஜெக்ட் டு எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் சைத்தன்யம் இஸ் பிரசன்ட் அண்ட் திஸ் சைத்தன்யம் திஸ் கான்சியஸ் பீங் விட் இஸ் ஃப்ரீ ஃப்ரம் லிமிடேஷன் as well another name also the prajnana dhanah in mandukya we use that word prajnana dhanah and he is the cause of everything prajnana dhanah he is identified with ishvara and he is the cause of everything otherwise also we can interpret the prajnah can be taken as prakrshena agnya prajnah nothing is known prakrshena agnya nothing is known is agnya totally ignorant total ignorance complete ignorance is there therefore prajna so both the interpretations are valid now this vishva tejasa and prajna they are not names of shariram they are names given to the same chaitanya atma in the presence of which all the, the three states of experiences are possible atma by itself is avastha tresakti the illuminator of these three states of experience and that is given three names for the three three avasthas all the three sharirams now so far we have discussed all the three sharirams and all the three avasthas and atma is what atma is sharira traya vidrittah and avastha traya sakshi the three avasthas depend on which body the atma is associated with identified with stula shariram the state in which we experience the world is jagrat avastha identified with sukshma shariram the dream world of experiences experienced by you as atma is sukshma avastha identified with karma shariram not experiencing anything the state of no experience is sushupti avastha and the experiencer of this three states are called isvaha aitasaha and prajnaha they are atma isva tajasa and prajna they are atma but atma is not any of them i hope you understand that so up to now we have discussed we have discussed in detail all the three sharirams and the three avasthas the next topic is going to come and uh, we will stop here and discuss that in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vasishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri guru jyo namaha hari om okay ya veni dos can ask me ji ore doubt hai nirvikalpa sir vikalpa ka sunninga la ha ee po vedanta paribhasha padikumbodhu naal நோட் எழுதி இருக்காது நீங்க ஞாபகம் சரியா ஜெய்பி எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணுறது இன்டிடர்மினேட் டிடர்மினேட் எழுதி வச்சிருக்கேன் அது கரெக்டா அது
அர்த்தம் <laughs> 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 There is no vital price, there is vital price. Maybe that the, uh, the context is not clear, the determinate and the determinate. Or you can see, there is no clear, uh, uh, clear recognition of object. There is not no clear, there is no recognition of object. Because there, are, there is no two. Uh, there is no two. No, there are 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 two. There is no two. There is no division. Right? There is no two. Therefore, indeterminate. Good answer. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jeet.